forward. Go to share the screen. Turn the camera on. Okay. All right, so I was just about done with 1.4. I was gonna do a couple more problems in 1.4, introduce 1.5. Now 1.5, yes, it looks like a pretty long assignment, but I have all of next week for that. Um, this was the original plan, okay? I was gonna do 1.4 Monday, but it looks like I'm gonna finish today. So I basically, I have that super long section 1.5, I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to do it, and that should be plenty of time. And then we're aiming for next Friday to have our first exam, right? So first exam coverage is all of this. So you say, how do I study? You study all of this. Uh, you submit the homework also. So just get out your cell phone and you know, click, 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 take pictures of all your pages, submit that. Um, take picture of your test and submit it, just email it to me, or if you have a scanner or a cam scanner or something like that, you can submit it because that's you know, better if you have a scanner. But if you just want to take a picture, that's fine. Uh, again, I have a 70% requirement. You must submit at least 70% of the homework. I mean, ideally you submit 100%, but hey, what do I end up doing, right? I end up doing 40%, 50% sometimes of all of this anyways, in which case you only have to do a little bit more, okay? All right, so now I'm going to show you a couple more problems from 1.4, introduce 1.5, and then I have to leave you some time to do your quiz, okay? <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to show you 19A. So again, a domain problem. Find the domain of the function. So there's an A and a B. So I'll do a, f of x is equal to one minus e to the x squared over one minus e to the one minus x squared. Find the domain. Don't worry, if you can't see it, I'll lose the book right away and show you on my paper. And I noticed that the paper, it's easier to focus than the book. So here's the function, right? So find the domain. Okay, so for this thing, there's no issue with the top. One minus e to the x squared is gonna be perfectly fine no matter what. So all I need to do is worry about the denominator. So one minus e to the one minus x squared, I have to make sure that this expression is not equal to zero. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set it equal to zero, right? Make it equal to zero and throw that out. Okay, so one minus e to the one minus x squared, the whole denominator equals zero. <clears throat> okay, move that over. Okay, so it says one equals e to the one minus x squared. One equals e to the one minus x squared. Okay, you might recall a solver problem that has an e, you can knock out the e with an ln. So now you take the natural log of both sides. You recall something like that? So one more time, one equals e to the blah, 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 blah. Get rid of the e by taking the natural log of both sides. So ln both sides. That way the ln and the e knock each other out. So the right-hand side is just one minus x squared. Okay. On the left side, ln of one is equal to zero. So that's pretty easy. Zero equals one minus x squared. Move the x squared over. X squared equals one. Then by the square root property, x equals plus or minus one. So x equals plus or minus one, which means for the domain, it's all real numbers minus the set consisting of plus or minus one. So that's how, that's the easiest way to write the domain. All real numbers minus the set consisting of plus or minus one. Okay, and a side note, the problem's finished, but notice what happens when you plug in one right here. You have one minus one, which is zero. E to the zero is one and then one minus one is zero. So you end up with a zero on the bottom. And you can tell likewise, if I plug in negative one, negative one squared is also one, one minus one is zero, e to the zero is one, and again, one minus one is zero. So ends up being the same thing. 
Okay. All right, so that's 19A. I'll let you do 19B on your own. And the only other problem I wanted to show you was 21. And then I would have done as many as I wanted to do from 1.4. Okay, so 21. Looks like this. Find the exponential function f of x equals c b to the x whose graph is given. <clears throat> so you know it's exponential. This is the point 1, 6, and 324, if you can't see it. 1, 6, and 324. So I will lose the book and give you the essence of it. So the essentials you need are f of x equals c b to the x. And by the way, I sneak in a little y equals, whenever it says f of x, that's the same as y, right? So f of x equals blah, 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 y equals blah, blah, blah. And you give me these two points, 1, 6, and 324. So here's all you do. For the point 1, 6, I plug in 1 for x, 6 for y. Okay? And that's why I put the y there. f of x is equal to y. So that means 1 goes here, 6 goes here, and it looks like this. You agree? So 1 is x, b to the x, b to the 1, which is going to be b, and y is 6. So 6 equals cb, essentially. Do the same thing for 324. So put a 3 up there for x, 24 goes in for y, so it looks like this. 24 equals cb cubed. Okay, so y is 24, 24 goes here, x is 3. So I have 6 equals cb, 24 equals cb cubed. I now have two equations and two unknowns, and I can solve that by a variety of methods. <coughs> okay, what I decided to do was divide both sides by 6. So I divided this by 6, and I divided this side by cb, because cb is equal to 6. Do you agree? It says 6 equals cb. So if I divide this side by 6, I can divide this side by 6. And this is 6, because it says so right here. And the reason why I want to do that is to cancel out the c's. So you can see c cancels out. 24 divided by 6 is 4. 4 is equal to b cubed divided by b is b squared. By the square root property, b is plus or minus 2. Okay. But for the definition of exponential functions, we said exponential functions cannot be negative for the base. So ignore the negative. So b is just 2. So the base is 2. Plug in 2 right here. 6 is equal to c times 2, divide by 2, and c is equal to 3. So I have it. c is 3, <clears throat> b is 2. Plug that back in here. Put a 3 here and a 2 here. So I have it. f of x is equal to 3 times 2 to the x. And that's my final answer. Okay, and some side notes. Okay, is this the same thing as 6 to the x power? 3 times 2 is 6. Can I make it 6 to the x? The answer is no, because this is an exponent. This is a multiplication. Multiplication is here. Exponent has priority. So you're supposed to go 2 to the x times 3. So no, this is not 6 to the x. <clears throat> and if this is the correct answer, when I plug in 1, I should get 6. And when I plug in 3, I should get 24. So this is little double checks, right? You come to here. And you say, hmm, I wonder if I did it right. Well, this should work. This should work. What do you get when you plug in 1 right there? 3 times 2, 6. And what do you get when you plug in uh, 3? Okay. 2 cubed, 8. 3 times 8, 24. They both work. Okay. So there we go. All right, and that is it for 1.4. So we only have one more section. I have all of next week. Yes, it's a big section, but I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for that. So right now, I'm just going to give you an introduction to 1.5, and then I'll stop, and then we can take a quiz. So 1.5 is on inverse functions and logarithms. You might recall that the logarithm function is the inverse of the exponential function. 
And the section starts on page 55. <clears throat> okay, so reviewing some concepts from pre-calc, page 56. Okay, you have something called a one-to-one -one function. So we have functions. A one-to-one -one function is such that it never takes on the same value twice, which means if you have two different x's, they always go to two different y's. So whenever x1 and x2 are different, f of x1 and f of x2 are different. <clears throat> okay, that leads to something called the horizontal line test. For a one-to-one -one function, okay, just a function in general, right? If you just have a regular function, it passes the vertical line test. A one-to-one -one function has to also pass the horizontal line test. <clears throat> okay, so here's a function which is not one-to-one, -one, okay, because I have two different x values, but I have the same y value. That violates the idea of something called a one-to-one -one function. I'm on page 56 if you want to take a note of this later on. Okay, so two different x values go to the same y value. But for something called a one-to-one -one function, right? A function's one-to-one -one if different x's always give you different y's. Okay, and that gives you the horizontal line test. A function is one-to-one -one if and only if no horizontal line intersects the graph more than once. <clears throat> okay, so here's a func. This is a function, the blue graph. It's a function. It does pass the vertical line test, but notice it does not pass the horizontal line test. Okay, now on the other hand, they say f of x equals x cubed. You can't see that, that's x to the third power. It's x cubed one to one. So x cubed looks like that. Okay, it is one to one because if you draw a horizontal line anywhere, it only touches at one point at the most. And yes, it is a function. It's a function because it passes the vertical line test, but it's also a one-to-one -one function. <laughs> okay, then they talk about x squared. Is x squared one-to-one? -one. So here's x squared. It is a function, but it's not a one-to-one -one function. It does not pass horizontal line tests, <clears throat> as you can see. So there are x values that give the same y value. Good example is three and negative three. Okay, so for x squared, if you plug in three, you get nine. If you plug in negative three, you also get nine. So I have two different x values going to the same y value, which means I do not have a one-to-one -one function. Okay, <clears throat> so it turns out for one-to-one -one functions, if you have a one-to-one -one function, you have something called an inverse function. Okay, <clears throat> so down here, I'm at the bottom of page 56. Only one-to-one -one functions have an inverse function, okay? We write the inverse function as f and a negative one. It almost looks like f to the negative one power, but you say f inverse. So if you see f and a negative one, that's not f to the negative one power. We read it as f inverse of x, okay? All that happens for the inverse function is you switch around the x and y's. So these two mean the same thing. f inverse of y equals x, is equivalent to, that arrow means is equivalent to, or means the same thing as f of x equals y. You basically just switch the x and y. So f inverse of y equals x means f of x equals y. So that's a definition of an inverse function, okay? You just switch around the x and the y and you get a point in the inverse function. Okay, illustration, top of 57. The idea is that if you apply function f and x gives you a value of y, then you immediately do f inverse, it brings you back to the x. Okay? It's kind of like your undo function on a computer, okay? <clears throat> or some computers, a shortcut is control z. Have you ever heard of control z? It's an undo, right? Like you make a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake. Can I get back to where I was? I want to go back to the previous state. It's sort of the undo function. So f inverse, the inverse function, is an undo function. It brings you back to where you just were. And then we have this property. Since you're just switching the x's and the y's, it makes sense that the domain of one becomes the range of the other. <clears throat> so the domain of f inverse is the range of f, and likewise the range of f inverse is the domain of f, because you're just switching around a bunch of x, y values. Okay. 
trying to show you a picture here of f and f inverse. <clears throat> so in the function f, 1 goes to 5, 3 goes to 7, 8 goes to 10. So f of 1 equals 5, f of 3 equals 7, f of 8 equals, oh, negative 10, I'm sorry. So for f inverse, you just turn it around. Okay, so you write f inverse of 5 is 1, f inverse of 7 is 3, f inverse of negative 10 is 8. Okay, and you can see what happened here. These three are just the reverse of this. f inverse of 7 is 3 because f of 3 is 7. You just switch them around. f inverse of 5 is 1 because f of 1 is 5. f inverse of negative 10 is 8 because f of 8 equals negative 10. All right, so again, that gives us this f inverse of x is equal to y means the same thing as f of y equals x, okay? So when you change f to n, f inverse or vice versa, you just switch around x and y. Okay, the two functions undo each other. So you have these two equations, the cancellation laws. Okay, so if you ever have f inverse of f of x, you get the original x back. Or it can be written this way, f of f inverse of x is also x. Okay, they cancel each other out. You do a function and it's inverse, they cancel each other out. Okay, so these are all on page 57. If you're kind of iffy on it, you may put it on your cheat sheet. Okay, and hopefully, hopefully you're start, starting to build your formula sheet for the test already. Okay, uh, I'm not I'm not really going to worry about that. I'll do some problems with this later, but I don't even want to show it to you. <clears throat> but here's a graphical property of inverse functions. Okay, the graph of f inverse is obtained by reflecting the graph of f about the line y equals x. That's an interesting property. I'm on page 59 now. Okay, so y equals x is this line, right? Slope is one, y intercept is the origin. Okay, so here's the graph of f, this blue line. If you reflect across the line y equals x, okay, you're not reflecting across the x axis or the y axis. If you reflect across y equals x, then the red graph is the inverse. So f and f inverse, okay? Because x comma y switches over to y comma x. Okay, so that's what this is. The graph of f inverse of f is obtained by reflecting the graph of f about the line y equals x. Here's another example. Okay. So the inverse of the blue is the red, evidently. So if they give you one of them and you reflect right there, the mirror image turns out to be like that. Okay, and then about logarithms. Okay, logarithms are the inverse of the exponential functions. <clears throat> okay, so we have f of x equals b to the x. The inverse is the logarithm to the same base, log base b of x. Okay, so here we see here, log base b of x equals y means the same thing as b to the y equals x. If you can't read that, log base b, remember we did logarithms before? Okay, log base b of x equals y means b to the y equals x. So you have the same base here. Notice this is base b, this is base b. So the exponential function and the log function are inverses of each other as long as you have the same base. So like they're both base seven or they're both base two or whatever. And that leads us to this property also, okay? So if you have an exponential followed by a log or vice versa, they cancel each other out. So log base B of B to the X equals X. If you can't see that, log base B of B to the X equals X. Or it can look like this, B raised to the, can't see that, it's log base B of X equals X. Again, B raised to the, log base b of x equals x. That's an exponential followed by a log or vice versa. 
a log followed by an exponential, as long as they're the same base. That's why they put B. So the base is both seven or both 12 or whatever. Okay, then you have these cancellation laws. Okay, so that was the bottom of page 59 there. Okay. Okay, properties of logs you might recall from pre-calc. Okay, laws of logarithms. Okay, the log of a product is the sum of the logs. It says log base b of x times y equals log base b of x plus log base b of y. <clears throat> Remember that from pre-calc? Log of something times something, log of the first plus the log of the second. Sometimes you hear the language of log of a product is the sum of the logs, same base. This one, we would say the log of a quotient is a difference of the logs. Okay, so division here, subtraction here. Log base b of x over y, you can't see that. Log base b of x over y equals log base b of x minus log base b of y. Okay, and then finally the power property log base b of x to the r, that r gets to come down in front, r log base b of x. One more time, log base b of x to the r power, the r gets to come down in front, r log base b of x. And by the way, all of these laws are both directions, okay? You can go from left to right, but you can also go from right to left. So some of the problems, maybe they start off with the right side, you end up going like that. So it might look like a sum here, you bring it back as a product. Or it might look like a difference here, make it into a quotient. Or here, right, you might have a coefficient, like pretend there's a seven there, you can bring that seven back up. So you can go either left to right or right to left. Okay, and then definition of natural log, ln. Ln x means log base e of x. E is like 2.71828, something like that. Okay, E is like 2.7. You've never heard of that before. We'll do a lot more with E later. But LN stands for natural log or log natural. Natural log of X, log base E of X means LN of X. That's the same as LN X on your calculator. Okay, so on your calculator, the LN, that's log base E. So on my calculator, here's LN. Usually above the LN is E to the X. So LN stands for natural log or log natural. The base is E, okay? Just a regular log, that's base 10. Okay? Now in our class, we're almost exclusively gonna do natural log. We're almost never gonna do logs to other bases. In fact, we'll find out we don't like logs to any other bases than base E, even though we don't understand it now, okay? What's E? E is about 2.7, 2.718, okay? I think I can actually illustrate that on my calculator. I can kind of show that to you. So you may not be able to see it. But I did E raised to the first power. E to the first power. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's 2.71828. You can do this on your own calculator also. Okay, but to get that, you have to do the second function, right? So LN, second function. Okay, I've seen yellow, I've seen green, I've seen blue. Second function above the LN is E to the X. Okay, so if I do E to the one, I get 2.718, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So that's natural log. Okay. And so ln x and e to the x are inverses. So ln x equals y means e to the y equals x, because this is log base e. So these are equivalent. ln x equals y means e to the y equals x. <clears throat> And this is just like that cancellation property we saw earlier. LN and an E back to back cancel out. So if you see LN E to the X, that's X. And also E to the LN X is X. So E and LN back to back cancel out. So E and LN cancel out, LN E cancel out, you just have X. And in particular, they also tell you that LN of E is one. LN of E is one. And one more and I, for now, okay, so you had this in pre-calc, something called a change of base formula. We will need that a little bit later. 
Okay. It says log base B of X, log base B of X. You can change it to ln X over ln B. <clears throat> log base B of X is ln X over ln B. That's a change of base formula. We're going to do that trick quite a bit. Again, we like base E. After all, we like ln better. So log base B of X, ln X over ln B. <clears throat> okay, and here's a typical log graph. Log graphs tend to look something like that. Okay, so y equals ln x goes through the point one zero, and it goes like that. Y axis as an asymptote. All right, folks, I'm going to stop there. Okay, so I have a little bit more about the trig function, but I'll save that for next time. Okay, so let's get ready for the quiz. <clears throat> Let me show it to you. Okay, uh, if you want to take a picture on your cell phone, or I guess you can write it down if you want. It's all the composition of function stuff. And I apologize, the circle came out a little bit high, but it's supposed to be like F circle G, G circle F and all that. <clears throat> okay, so let F of X equal 3X minus 10. G of X equals 11X plus 30. And just like the homework problems that we saw before, find all of these guys. F circle G, G circle F, F circle F, G circle G. Okay, so one more time. I'll give you another 15, 20 seconds. If you want to take a picture on your cell phone or do a screenshot, or I guess you have time to write it down. Okay, so F of X is 3X minus 10. G of X equals 11X plus 30. And just like the homework, right? Find F of G, F circle G, G circle F, F circle F, G circle G. Okay, due by our next class period. So uh, what is it, Monday at 12, 10 p.m. You have to turn it in. Okay, show all your work and everybody's responsible for all the problems. Okay, so I will grade you individually from here on out, not as a team. So I'll put you in your breakout groups and you can discuss it, but everybody's responsible for all four problems and you'll be graded individually. Okay, so does everybody have this? Okay. I'm still recording. So worst comes to worst, you can look at the recording or ask one of your uh, classmates about that. Okay, so work on it by yourself for a few seconds. It'll take me a while to set up the breakout groups. Okay, and Prasanna will join one of your breakout groups also. Okay, so work on it for now and I'll set up the groups. So let me stop the share, turn off the recording. <clears throat>